All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bodybuilding News Network. As always, I'm your host, Sanch, and let's go ahead and talk about the KO Squad Pro, the Egypt Pro. They always have such cool names, right? Uh, but we're going to talk about the men's open lineup. So if you're interested in something like that, make sure you stay tuned. But before we get into this video, guys, if you want to subscribe, I would appreciate it. We have lots more content coming out uh, along with the complete coverage of the KO Squad Pro here on the Bodybuilding News Network. So if you're interested in watching something like that, definitely consider subscribing, liking this video if you enjoy the style of content and keep the conversation going in the comment sections below. But besides that, let's get back to the scheduled programming. Now, I have the scorecard here. Uh, this was about three days ago, so I do not believe that any more competitors were added to the list. And I have an interesting conversation I want to have with you at the end of this video. So stay tuned as we get towards the end of the scorecard. Uh, just a little hint, but we'll, we have a couple conversations I want to have, actually. But let's go ahead and start off with this first competitor. Now, from what I understand, all of the Iranian competitors were unable to get visas to uh, compete. Pete. They were unable to get, I don't know if it's called a work visa or an athlete visa, but uh, a work visa to come to Egypt from Iran and compete here. So any Iranian competitor in the opener, the 212, uh, are going to be scratched. So uh, apologies to the first guy. And guys, I mean, he has a pretty solid physique. I think he could have done pretty well in this lineup. Uh, he's got that... Um, that tan that the Egyptian guys, or not the Egyptian, but the uh, Indian guys normally wear uh, at the at the competitions. The um, I think it's called Dream Tan, but uh, man, he would have been interesting to see the uh, Bay Rose Tabini Abarquani. I'm sure I got that one close. <laughs> but um, the next competitor, Victor Cano or Victor Wal Rea Cano from Mexico. And the last time we saw him was, I think it was a 2017 San Marino Pro. And I'm not really sure where we're going to see this guy in the lineup. 2017 was a while ago. And uh, this is what Victor looked like in 2017. It'll be interesting to see what kind of muscle he's been able to put on uh, in those few years since 2017. Samson Dowda is the next competitor on the list. And uh, no introduction needed there. I'm sure all of you are familiar with Samson Dowda uh, placing, what was it, second at the Yamamoto Pro Show. Um, or no, third. Second. No, second. He beat out he beat out Rolly, right? I've been a brain fart. But uh, did very well, placed second at the uh, Arnold UK Classic. And, and then he also placed in that top three at the Yamamoto Pro uh, in Italy. So... I definitely expect to see him in this in the top three here. Um, I haven't put a prediction list out yet, but uh, stay tuned for that on the channel as well. But uh, Samson Dada, number three on the list, minus the scratches from Iran. And uh, Mohammed El Amam. He's got a couple of different names. Last time we saw him was, I believe this is the Tampa, the 2021 Tampa Pro, uh, placing in that first call out, I believe. Uh, Good physique, great, great structure. I'd like to see just from this photo, just from this one, you know, cherry picked photo, I guess. That's what I do on this channel. Uh, I would say I'd like to see a little bit more conditioning in the midsection. And, uh, you know, something he's not going to be able to do in just a few months, but either put more upper inner chest or pectoral muscle on or work on bringing the chest up. Uh, maybe even trying to hit one of those Nick Walker vacuums uh, like he used to do with his old shots. Maybe try that out and see if it emphasizes the chest. But, you know, overall, I think it's a really balanced physique. Great legs, great calves. Uh, definitely would consider him being one of the favorites to be in this first call out. Now, this next guy, Ralph Farah, as I pull up his photo, this guy was a classic physique guy, I believe. Um, and he turned pro in the Finland uh, so we haven't really seen too much of him. He's, he's somewhat of a newer competitor. Uh, really nice lines, great structure, a little bit on the smaller end for what I would say uh, an, an open competitor. But uh, he has great lines, great uh, symmetry, great quads. I love seeing that that uh, striations and the quads going all the way up into the posing trunks. I think that's really something that's overlooked nowadays from a lot of competitors. But uh, great structure, like I said. I don't know if we're going to see him in the first call out, but I think he's going to bring a good package. But we're definitely excited to see, what was it Ralph Fair? Farah? Farah? Is it like um, Farah? Farah? It's probably Farah. 
Uh, next one is Kevin Gebhardt. Now we just saw him at the Yamamoto Pro. I don't believe he was in that first call out. Um, you know, now that he got really dieted down, he's big. He's got a lot of muscle, but that midsection is is really coming out on the sides. Uh, you really can't see from the front, you know, what's going on here with Kevin. Um, and then he also looks pretty soft in the leg department. So although I really love the shredded six pack he has going and, and the biceps look really great, uh, there's definitely some uh, imbalances with Kevin's physique that uh, I'd like to see. I'd like to see him work on. No disrespect. Love the guy. Love the sport. Um, but, you know, another one of those guys, I think that he'd be really happy with the first uh, first call out. But uh, really don't know here uh, if the conditioning speaks from this Yamamoto showing uh, probably expect him outside the top six. One of the favorites to win the show, Regan Grimes, uh, really, really shocked us at the Elysian Sport Festival. Man, I got so much stuff in my nose right now. I'm sorry. But um, Regan Grimes at the Legion was amazing. The amount of conditioning separation he brought, uh, I thought was very, very, um, oh, it makes me excited for his future. Uh, what him and Milos are going to be able to do in the next couple of years, I think is uh, a, a telltale sign. I think we need to uh, take this as a shot across the bow, if you may, uh, of what to expect from Regan Grimes in, in the near future. I definitely think he's going to be a favorite coming into the show. Expect Regan Grimes being uh, no lower than the top three, depending on the conditioning, guys, depending on the conditioning. And uh, Stanimal, Stanimal's also competing here. Uh, you, want to, you want me to try saying his name again? Stan de Leguer. Leguer? Is that better than Languau? <laughs> I absolutely butchered it last time, so I appreciate the roast in the comment section, guys. But... I thought he brought a good package to the Legion Sport Festival uh, just a couple weeks ago, but definitely needs to to work on bringing just a little bit deeper separation, especially in the quads. The, the midsection looked good. It's just a little, there's just a little bit of a film, you know, if you kind of look at the, the arms, you can kind of see that there's kind of like a film hiding everything. Uh, he definitely had uh, about, I don't know, maybe two, 3% more he could have uh, dialed in on the on the um, depletion, on the, um, I don't even know, guys, waterlog. I, I've never, I've never depleted like that before. I uh, really don't know, but I'd like to see him just a little bit sharper. Who knows what he can do for this show? Uh, I know he's been training hard, coming all the way from, I believe he was a, a men's physique guy, and then coming all the way into classic, and then coming all the way into men's open. So uh, it's really going to be impressive to see once he, finally you know hits it once he gets it right 100 percent or even 95 percent you know i'd say this is 90 percent, maybe even 85 percent of what he can do so um maybe in that top six i know he he was almost cracking that top six at le top six at legion so if he got in this top six i think that'd be a uh, a good placing for stan de leguer hmm now, uh, another one, and probably why a lot of you clicked on the scorecard here on this video, is Cedric McMillan. Now, um, we had a couple different outlets reporting that Cedric was not competing. Uh, I even myself uh, hopped on that train saying, hey, there's a possibility that Cedric might not be competing at this show. Uh, I still have not seen anything official. I've still seen his name on the scorecard. I uh, haven't seen anything coming out of the Cedric McMillan camp. Uh, I believe he's coaching himself. So, you know, who even knows what's going on? Uh, but I also, uh, well, actually, I'll save that for another video. But uh, if Cedric comes in, especially the way he did for his posing routine, the posing routine uh, after prejudging, wow, uh, I think he could do some damage, guys. I think he was a lot more conditioned than what we originally thought. Uh, and stay tuned for that video as well. And the next guy on the scorecard is pure. Is it pure? P Poria? 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 Payan? Poria Payan? I'm sure that's butchered. Iranian guy. Uh, he won't be able to compete here because the the visa issue. But uh, another one of those guys. I don't know if he would have had enough size to really battle it out. Uh, and I wasn't able to find his competitive photos. If you guys have those, if you have that link to either Flex Online or NPC News Online, uh, please drop it in the comment sections below so we can all view his competitive photos. Uh, but I have something from his Instagram. 
thought he would have been competitive, but uh, you know, it is what it is. One of those Iranian guys getting nixed off the card. Uh, another one of the competitors, I've heard some rumors as of today that potentially Hassan Mustafa might not be competing at this show. Um, I would be surprised as he's a, a native Egyptian. I think this would really be a, a good show for him to place in. Uh, and if bodybuilding politics was ever a thing, it would be at this show. Uh, we have a lot of Egyptians competing in the show. Uh, so who knows what kind of placings or favoritism they could get. Uh, I hate to think about it, but I, I think it's definitely uh, a reality. But uh if he is going to be out of this show, I would be surprised, but I haven't heard anything uh, as of yet. I have heard that uh, he has a new coach or that he at least has uh, stepped away from Chris Aceto. So uh, I don't know if that's breaking for you guys, but uh, now you heard it. Uh, Hassan is a free agent as of a, a, a prep coach, but if he doesn't compete here, I would be surprised. I would probably expect to see him in that top six just because of the pure top sick, top sick. Enunciate, Joshua. Enunciate. I would expect to see him in the top six, and I would be actually very surprised if he did not. The next competitor on the list out of the USA is Bikramjit. Bikramjit? Sign? Sing? Sing? Bikramjit? Sing? Uh, classic physique guy as of the Battle of Texas. Uh, not, not even, I think this was this year. So, uh, a classic guy jumping into the open. I think it's a bold move. I think it's a very bold move, classic to open. Um, so definitely going to be interesting to see, uh, where he falls in this lineup. Definitely. He's going to be undersized from a lot of people. Uh, and then he doesn't have that, um, Sean Clarita effect where he's completely capped out on muscle mass, uh, to compete with the bigger guys. So, not sure if this is the right guy. Uh, if it is, you know, best of luck, man. Uh, definitely would, uh, I'd be impressed if he landed in that top six, top eight. Uh, sometimes, you know, the judges reward those nice clean lines. And for a classic guy, that is one of their uh, signature pieces of their physique is having those great clean lines. So, you know, best of luck to this guy. Like I said, top six, top eight, I think would be really good placing for him. And now we get into the Egyptian guys. Now there is five guys on this scorecard that um, I just don't know how you're supposed to find these guys. Now I was able to find Hassan Mustafa uh, because the first two words are Hassan Mustafa. But I don't know if this is going to come across as ignorant. And I hope it doesn't because I, it's, that's just not me, guys. I promise you that's not me. Um, I've, I've really tried to be woke, right? I'm trying to learn and be the best person I can be. But if you're going to be competing as a professional and a professional athlete, if you want to use your full name, and I'm, I'm assuming that the El Saeed Mustafa El uh, Mar, Marhamin, Marhami, that whole name is either surnames or uh, locations or tribes that you originated from, kind of like... Um, something L L Paris or something. Uh, it, it tells you like where they're from, where their origins are from. If you're going to use a name like that, everything's got to match guys. Everything's got to follow suit. Your NPC news online account has to match that. Your Instagram has to be like, uh, Ahmed Mustafa L Saeed Mustafa. I see two Mustafa's in the same name. No, it is what it is, but if you want to do that, everything's got to follow suit, guys. Have your full name, underscore IFBB Pro, so that for me, as a journalist, I can find those those accounts. I couldn't find any of these guys' uh, NPC News Online accounts. I couldn't find their Instagrams. And it's really, at the end of the day, it's a disservice to the fans, and it's a disservice to these athletes, these competitors, that me and the other people uh, of the media cannot find their accounts to... Uh, best represent them and promote them coming into their shows. So I would like to see some sort of standardization of the scorecards. I've never seen it this crazy where they have the, all the Egyptian guys' names are just so long, except for Mohammed el -Amam. Uh His was simple. So I don't know how that rant is going to be received, but it is what it is. Uh, it's a good conversation. I think it should be addressed. 
we're also going to have another conversation about some other stuff. So uh, today's going to be a very video heavy day. I hope you enjoyed my coverage of the complete lineup for the men's open bodybuilding division or category for the KO Squad Pro, the Egypt Pro coming to, was it Cairo? Cairo, Egypt, the 31st of October. My name's Sanch, as always, your host here on the Bodybuilding News Network, BNN. If you guys are interested in watching more content like this, check out these playlists, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.